with Mason Dixon line of that getting better. <laughs> let's let's dive into some more NFL talk. The kind that we're not happy about. The NFL PA. This is the headline from Pro Football Talk. NFL PA President J.C. Treader. The NFL believes the virus will bend to football. Um, and there's other ones, you know, that, that have come out. ESPN has talked about. The NFL PA is not happy. They're not happy with the NFL. They're not happy with the protocols. They have voted against any preseason games. The NFL wants two so that there's at least two dress rehearsals that people are kind of getting back into playing because it's games that don't mean anything. It's practices, right? Right. In this instance, but the NFL PA. Where you're actually going live for right. the first time since last year. Here is what Treader wrote on the NFL PA website. He said, our normal return date for training camp is quickly approaching and we are still far from back to normal. Our main concern is player safety, both in regard to preventing the virus's transmission as well as preventing injuries after an extended and historically unique layoff. Like many other industries, football's resistance to change is based on the belief that the best way to run things is the way that we have always run things. That pervasive thought process will stop this season in its tracks. He pointed out that players simply don't want to return to work. They want to stay at work. Part of the concern is the possibility of increased injuries due to the lack of an offseason program. After the 2011 lockout, which wiped out the offseason program that year, Treader said injuries increased by 25%. Now, we've talked about this a thousand times on this show. We had on a physical therapist. It, this whole thing, it is a serious concern, right? Hey, this doesn't make any sense to me. The players union doesn't want preseason, which is where you get practice. It's where you get your live practice. Yeah. It's where you get your reps, where you actually get to go full speed without somebody wearing a red shirt, without you having to hold up when you hit somebody. You 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 get live real practice. They don't want that, but they want guys to be ready to play football and not be injury prone. But the only way to get in football shape is to play football. We have seen this for the last. I've been alive for thirty seven years, and my entire life of watching football, I know there is no amount of working out and exercising that a guy can do. That will when get you ready for life. When they come back, yeah. there is a learning curve to catch up to the speed of the game. Yeah, there's there's that, nothing that, that we so, can do about so this. So you can't say with one hand. This is why I don't. I'm usually for unions, and I'm I'm not. I'm. I, mean, I shouldn't even say that. I'll take everything case by case. I believe every that's the way the world works. Give me your scenario. Give me your situation. I'll tell you which side I think is right. Which side I think is wrong. Okay. Everybody's not always right, and everybody's not always wrong. I don't understand how a union can fight for less practice, but also say we want to make sure everybody is safe and and not corona safe. They don't get hurt on the field. They are not prone to injuries. More practice time actually leads to less injuries. I know that sounds counterproductive. And every year, the first two weeks of, of training camp, somebody busts an ACL and their season is done. I it, get that. It, but it's a proven fact. The that majority you have of practice. the players are healthier when it comes to soft tissue and all this other stuff when they are playing football at a at least at a practice level because you're not – you're not having the massive collisions, but your soft tissue muscles, those long muscles that tighten and pull and snap and cause real injuries for these guys are getting worked out without taking the collisions. So so that is one of the concerns, right? The injury is one of them. Right? Now, his broader concern relates to the pandemic. So Yeah, the, the Rona is definitely a concern. Shredder says that the league accepted the initial recommendations of a joint committee of doctors, trainers, and strength coaches, such as no joint practices and no fans at training camp. Shredder writes that the league is unwilling to follow the committee's recommendation of a 48-day training camp and that the NFL is unwilling to prioritize player safety and believes that the virus will bend to football. He emphasizes the union's position that there should be no preseason games. Um, all this kind of stuff, right? He said, we don't want to merely return to work and have the season shut down before we even get started. The NFLPA will do its part to advocate for player safety. We will continue to hold the NFL accountable and demand that the league use data, science, and the recommendations of its own medical experts to make decisions. It's been clear for months that we need to find a way to fit football inside the world of the coronavirus. 
Making decisions outside of that lens is both dangerous and irresponsible. I I see where he's coming from, and everybody that's in the chat, hang on just a minute, I'm going to get to you, I promise, because that thing's been firing off. Um, all of this is, I'm selfish. I want football. I, I think sometimes you are just not going to be able to do things the way that you are always doing it. I understand that part from, from J.C. Treader. I get that. On the other side of it, yeah, I understand the doctors have said it would be best to have a 48-day training camp, but good gracious. Like, I understand that's a month and a half. That College football is, is going through the same thing. I get it, but you can't fit it in there. Like, it, it, the timing doesn't work. So do you want to make less money? Then Okay, then we'll cut some games. Like, if you don't want to make less money. I think you can in there because you can extend the season pretty easily. That's not a problem. I, I absolutely think they could fit it in there. The problem is this. If we start the 40-day clock now, then we're okay. Yeah. But if we continue to push things back and push things back and push things back, then we're never going to get to the 40-day clock, 48-day yeah. clock. And that, that's that, the issue. lies the issue of, you. They once again, I just feel like, so many times unions fight against themselves because what they ask for seems to count counter the, the, the original thing they asked for. Okay. Right. And my, my issue is, is at some point in time, owners <clears throat> or management in these leagues that are, com- that are, that are uh, negotiating with the players, they're not magical, <laughs> you know, like, we can nitpick over money all you want, and yes, owners hide lots of money. Yes. Okay, that's a different argument. But when it comes to some of these things, these owners, these owners aren't magical. They're going to put a plan out, and they're going to work with you, the PA, to put the plan together. But once we have some kind of a plan, we need to try to stick to the plan the best we can. Yes. Yes. No, you're you're dead on. Uh, let me jump into this chat here. Matt Miller said, think about it. Earl Thomas having a foursome with his brother went away after two days because of how effed up 2020 is. Yeah, you got that right. Uh, Michael said, quick question, though. If this is a white player reposting something racist and made the same mistake as DJX, unaware of the meeting, would he still have a job? No. Um, likely not, no. but it would really depend on what it is. Right? I, don't, I don't know. I, I, we, we're going to disagree there. I think the answer is no. I Man. think the world in which we live in right now, yes, if a white player – shares out something openly racist, openly racist, I think 100% they're gone. Yeah, I guess because, like, I, I've been trying to compare this to the Jake Fromm thing, but it's really not the same thing at all. Like, Jake not Fromm close. didn't share anything. No. Nope. That was a private conversation that somebody else leaked. No. Nope. And, you know, he didn't get cut, but I don't know. If it was this exact same circumstance, yeah, probably. I think I think they're gone. Probably so. Uh, Damien said, I'd... Uh, I'd people think he should be punished for his comment, then the NFL should punish Breeze and Fromm for their stupidity and also punish Kraft for being involved in the sex trafficking. God almighty. Oh, Damien. You do know there's no sex trafficking there. He's just an old man who got jerked off by an old lady, <laughs> right? Like, they found that she's a legal American citizen and she's openly choosing to do this line of work. Like, yeah, that's a that's a misdemeanor. Okay. Uh, right. Michael, hey, Michael said, for happy endings, a misdemeanor. Michael said, I agree, Damien, but it has to be fair across the board. Punish everyone or punish no one. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think, think the, the NFL is punishing anybody. Here's yeah. the thing, guys. These are individual teams that are the employers of these players. Yes, it's right? the team so is going to do something. You can't say that the Saints have to do things exactly the way the Eagles have to do things. Yeah. Those are two different owners, they're two different management teams, and they're two different bosses. And, and these they are don't things, have to do things the same. These are things happening outside of football. So yes. it has really nothing to do with the league itself. Like the That's NFL, right. I understand Until Roger the, Goodell puts you on the commissioner's exempt list and gets involved. And talks about the personal these, conduct policy. Yes, the, the personal conduct. And until it goes to that level, and that's his choice, then, then all 32 owners can judge this by however they wish. That's their right and prerogative as owners of the team and management staffs of the teams. Yeah. So, yeah. so no, they don't have to all be the same. Every owner can do it however the hell he wants, as long as they're not breaking labor laws and breaking breaking rules 
uh, of engagement with the with the players you. They absolutely can can judge them differently. Yeah. No, we might yeah. not like it, but that owner will then pay the consequence of being too harsh or too lenient based on the fans, you know, reaction. It, reaction. That's it. Yeah. And 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 they'll they'll decide if if they're okay with that or not. Ben jumped in. He said spring football. Um I don't want spring football. <laughs> spring football is not happening in the NFL. Well, I mean, if if they push it back for the the forty eight days or whatever, and they but they well, keep well, pushing back the beginning of training camp, then yeah, you would push that thing into spring, right? So no, you'd you'd push in forty eight days. It'll be March first, March second, March third. That's not spring yet. No, I mean the official and start even if of the Super Bowl is played in the spring. Is that is that considered spring football? The entire season is played no. and done, and we got one game. That's the second week of March. No, probably on. not. Probably not. Uh, We're Michael, not going to have spring football. Michael said doctors' recommendations aren't always realistic. Uh, Michael said spring football would be fun, less cold games in Denver. Yeah, if you're in Denver or you're in the Northeast or something like that, like yeah, I can I can understand that, but. They're not having spring football. That means doing... regular season games are going to be played in January, which means more cold games. Yeah, it'll be colder if they just push it back. If they if they try and start it in February or March, but they, they ain't doing that because no, that, that's not happening. No, that's definitely not happening. Jim no. Jim John on YouTube jumps in and said, "We're about to see if playing games during Corona will actually work here in Orlando. The Magic Kingdom opened today, and the NBA is arriving. Hope all uh, hope all goes well. Yeah, so yep. do we. I, I'm ready for the NBA." I'm not a massive NBA fan, but I'm I'm ready. You know, I'm, I'm like, dying for something right now. That's I'm, baseball I, starts back yes. on the 24th, and I am I am ready. I I will be taking the day off for opening day, like I usually do, to sit in front of a television and watch baseball. And then the next week, six days after that, is when the NBA fires up, and they will be playing basketball all day, every day for every day. however long. Yep. Um, let's move off of all of this and let's talk about some college football very quickly. 